Welcome back into Talking Adventure. Joining me today is uh, Alderman Tom Clowder, Tom, former mayor of the city of Fitchburg, former alder, former security guard now, you can add that, and former police officer. Uh, he, you've done it all, Tom, and there's still more to be had, right? I know. I knew you were going to say that, but I can tell you that I'm, I'm really not adding to my resume. Um, <laughs> I'm really not. Believe it or not, you already said it. So. Until you retire, I'm not holding my uh, breath. I'm, Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I hear you. Okay. I hear you. Uh, so, Tom, we've got you on for a couple of reasons. A, we want to get to know all of our uh, all of our alders here uh, in the city of Fitchburg, and uh, we'll continue to invite all of them uh, on here to the show. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about your district, talk a little bit about some of the projects you're working on, and then save a little time at the end, Tom, to talk about uh, a unique uh, experience you had uh, working at the Super Bowl of all Super Bowls, let me tell you what. That was a good game. Tell me if you're, are you an Eagles fan? You know, because the Packers weren't in it, I really didn't care who win, but I was really, I have to say I was really rooting for the Eagles a little bit, but just because they were the underdog. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I'm uh, we'll, we'll save, yeah, we'll, we'll save all of that for for the I'm later piece. Um, but first, Tom, why don't you talk a little bit about your district? You are uh, District 4, uh, and uh, what's that district made up of? Right. District, first of all, before I forget, I want to say thanks for inviting me. And um, I, I think between the alders and the mayor, um, they should do this. They should come forward and um, talk to you because at the same time they're talking to you, they're talking to the whole city. And um, it's good to get the information out there. District 4 and um, seat 7 that I'm in, and I'll say this a little bit slow just so people understand because I'm sure people... Some people watch and say, you know, I don't think he's my alder. Oh, yes, he is my alder. <laughs> or they don't know. Mm -hmm. But this district, um, District 4, goes, and I'm going to take you, I'm going to use Lacey Road first. So if you go down Lacey Road, uh, come back to the west, but let's go east. If you go down Lacey Road, and then you go south on Fish Hatchery, you go to Irish Lane, you go down Irish Lane to the east, and I have everything to the south. I know I said that kind of quick, but it's kind of a jog there. Um, I'll say that again. So if you're on Lacey Road, if you go to Fish Hatchery, turn right. You're going south. You go to Irish. Turn left on Irish, and I have everything to the south. Now let's go back on Lacey Road. If you're on Lacey Road and you go up to Seminole Highway, take a right, and you go to the north. And you go to the north, and you'll hit PD. Then you're going to go left on PD to the west across Verona Road over to, I'm going to call it uh, Ficharona, and then it goes south, and it's the whole district. It's really all the rural area, well, pretty much all the rural area, and um, the farmers. Um, there's a lot of apartment buildings out there, um, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of what I have for the district. Yeah, it's a pretty expansive place here. You're seeing the map now oh, uh, to help. We just go. got it up. Don't worry, Tom. I would have pointed to it if it was up. <laughs> we, we just got you it up good. here. Yep. But, it, yeah, yeah, it does cover it, what looks like the majority of the city, but uh, really it is a, a strong rural area, but uh, wraps around uh, kind of a little bit of the whole city. It does. It does. It. it uh, the north end, I don't have. Um, you know, I want to make it clear, too, when I say something like that, you still, as an alderman, have the whole city because you still represent the city no matter where you go. But there are districts, and this particular district in blue is the District 4 that I represent. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's it's a wide one there. Yeah, it is. It's a good thing. Yeah. leaves you uh, with some unique, uh, unique challenges uh, and yep. uh, some longtime uh, residents here, too, as well. Yeah, there is. There's no question about it. There's... Um, there's a lot of history in Fitchburg, and um, um, there's no question about, uh, I mean, even think of the, the farmers that have been there, and even the farmers' children um, <laughs> are, some of them, not, I'm not saying a lot, but um, some even buy homes in our subdivisions, so the generations are still out there, without which, a doubt. Which is pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you you kind of gave me a little bit of an outline of some of the stuff you're working on, and so we'll try to touch as much as we can with the time we have. Sure. Um, but talk a little bit about uh, traffic, something you're working on. 
Well, the traffic, it's interesting for the residents. Um, the traffic in Fitchburg is always a problem. And the deal is people, not only because of the Verona Road Project, but we're cut through. Um, these, these are not the city's words now. These are Tom's words. We're a community that people cut through. Um, they cut through PD. They cut through Fish Hatchery Road. Um, we have a lot of traffic that isn't our own. And every community has that. I know people will say, well, Tom, that's all it is. It is all over. But um, traffic is always a problem in the city. Um, and to give you a little idea what's going on with traffic, at Lacey Road and Seminole Highway in the future, there will be a stop and go light. Um, um, I, I do, there was some discussion about a roundabout, um, which I'm against. Um, I just think right now a traffic light at that intersection is good. Um, for the future. Another one we're looking at to work with the town of Rona. I want to make that clear. The town of Rona, so it's just not on Fitchburg's back, but it's at Fitcherona. Fitcherona down there by Nesbitt um, is, they're backed up. I can tell you right now, people are already thinking, oh my gosh, when I'm on Fitcherona, it's sometimes backed up to Lacey Road. We get it. I understand that. Um, I've been down there and the traffic's been backed up that bad. Um, so those are a couple things. Oh, there is another road coming in. If people don't know about it, if you talk about the um, Sub-Zero property, it goes across the field there, literally. There's a, there's a Dunn farm there. There's a Dunn field, I call it, um, where you see a grab. There's a dirt road. It looks like it's going across. That's going to be a road that will come on to Seminole Highway right there. Um, we also um, are looking at redoing a section of PD. That would be PD um, to the west, Seminole Highway at PD to the west, roughly, I'm not going to have the exact spot, but to the um, movie theater. Um, they're going to redo it. Um, I was against putting in bike lanes there. Uh, I'll tell you why quick. It, bicycle, bicycles, I'm not against, obviously, but bikes in traffic really doesn't go together. Um, if you can kind of avert that. And they had different designs that they were going to do on PD. And I kept bringing up, we just need one path for bicyclists, um, walkers, joggers. And I'll tell you where I got the best example. It's John Nolan Drive. John Nolan Drive, they seem to all work together well. And it doesn't cost the city more money, too, to put a bike lane in, to put a um, stroller lane in, to put you know, uh, an example that, um, my own opinion, it's my opinion now, not anybody else's, Lacey Road down here to the east, overdone. I wasn't on the council then. I wasn't the mayor. Um, that that was overdone, and it cost the city a lot of money, a lot of money we didn't see coming. But um, those are just some traffics that I know we're, we're, we're you're familiar with, and uh, Fish Hatchery Road is always going to be a problem, no question about that. Years ago, it should have been four lanes all the way out to uh, beyond at least a Whalen Road, but yeah. it wasn't. Uh, development, developments. There's a lot, a uh, lot in your district uh, happening, uh, and I shouldn't say your district. The you know, again, I think you worded that very well. That uh, you know, all districts have something going on, but uh, talk about some of the development. There is. The development going on is um, I'm very much aware of, and I'm on top of it, I think, what's happening. Uh, first development is the North Stoner Prairie development we got going on at Lacey Road um, down here by Seminole Highway. The developer um, before me, when I say that, I wasn't on the city council then, um, had changed that development to high density or it was changed, and I was part of that. But at the same time, I wasn't aware that there was a study committee out there. And the study committee did not want high density. And the developer brought high density to the city, and it didn't go over real well. And at this point, all I'm going to say is I know that um, he's working on redoing that. Um, I don't know to what degree. And um, that's a development that um, high density on that corner it would just been tough to swallow for a lot of people. Um, that's a busy, busy intersection. I'm aware of that one. Another one is uh, Fish Hatchery Road. Um, there was the um, 
south of Fish Hatchery Road, on Fish Hatchery, south of Lacey. Um, there's a development there that was high density, and the neighbors didn't like that one. It was um, also a development that um, it's a tough road to get out without having high density and a lot of traffic, so that's been changed. And I wasn't at the meeting because I was out of town, but he wants to do senior housing there now. So that was changed. And the last one is the edge. And this one I don't know if so many people are aware of, but it's on MM, at the top of the hill on MM, it would be south of McCoy Road. Uh, on top of the hill there, um, Randy Alexander is looking at the edge development, and that would kind of overlook the city um, towards the capital, if you know what I mean. In that development, um, it would be condos, retail. Um, it's in an old landfill. Um, th so that uh, those are just a couple that um, are on the horizon, and um, we'll see what happens with them. Uh, yeah. We've only got a couple minutes left, okay. uh, and uh, let's talk. Uh, you want to talk about the city hall a little bit, and. Um, Sure. Some of the future, I don't call replacements, but staffing and, and, and whatnot. The, the, the people should know about City Hall. What happened at City Hall is um, the, the um, Department of Public Works director that we had, he went to the private sector. So we are going to um, fulfill that position, but at the same time, there's no one there now. We have a part-time person. And the other one was human resources. Human resources, um, that individual left to take a another job, I believe it was a state job, but I'm not sure, I think that's what it was, that will be filled. And also I want to put a pitch out for summer help, if you know somebody. And um, we've talked about it a lot on this show, trying to help you? get people in. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot, that it always comes this time of year, but. Well, you know, and the other thing, if uh, people are watching and they have college students, it's the ideal time to have them come walk through the front door because we're looking for um, summer help. And I can't emphasize enough that uh, we're higher college student, high school students. Um, it's a good time to apply in Fitchburg. Absolutely. Lots available. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like I said, it's always the time of year. So, mm -hmm. uh, Tom, I appreciate the time, and uh, we'll hopefully get you back on the show in the future. Okay. Thanks right. a lot. Appreciate it. All right. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. <laughs> 